Hey, everybody. My name's Teacher Ian, and I'm the owner of Right Start Newcomer Services. Welcome to tonight's Learn Canadian English live stream. So tonight we've got a great lesson. Uh, it's on Canadian citizenship. So all of you who are interested in becoming Canadian citizens now or in the future, hopefully you'll learn a lot from tonight's lesson. Um, we have been on vacation for the last few weeks, so I'm really happy to be back. Um, not sure why I look so purple. No, I didn't become purple over my vacation, and uh, I didn't even get that much sun, so I'm not really sure what's going on. Um, anyway, so it's it's really good to be back, and I hope you'll enjoy tonight's lesson, and welcome back to all of you. Uh, but before we begin tonight's lesson, I'd like to acknowledge that Right Start Newcomer Services conducts business in Chibuktuk, which is how you say Halifax in the Big Mod language. This city is part of the ancestral unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Okay, so if anybody's here, if anybody remembers that we, we, we do have English classes, please say hello. Uh, I missed you guys. Uh, I want to say hello, welcome back, and hopefully you didn't forget all of your English over the last few weeks while we were away. Um, so we have one student is here, Mariu. Hi, Mariu. Welcome. I don't remember you uh, coming to previous lessons, but welcome to tonight's lesson. And, and maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe you were at some lessons before. Please correct me. I do make a lot of mistakes. Uh, anyway, welcome, Mariu. Shohili, I was hoping that you would come tonight because I just saw your post. Congratulations. Shohili just became a citizen. So she got her citizenship, I think, today. Is that right, Shohili? So if we have any questions, we, we can ask you about it. Okay, Shohili? Uh, anyway, congratulations. That's amazing, because I know you've been here a really long time, and it must feel really, really good to finally get that, that citizenship. Okay, great. Thanks for joining, Shohili. Hey, Zineb, uh, welcome back. Thank you for coming back, and thank you for not giving up on our lessons. Okay, great, Zineb. Uh, I'm learning English a lot. I want to live in Halifax soon. Very cool. So great, good for you. Hopefully you will be able to get here soon. Um, the weather is getting nice. It's, it's a beautiful day. Uh, by the way, this is not Halifax. So if you're coming for mountains, it doesn't look like this. This is the Rockies. So this is just my background for tonight because we're talking about Canadian citizenship. Okay, thank you, Mariu and Beatrice. Hey, Beatrice, welcome back. I'm glad you're safe and sound and back. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally safe and sound. I just felt like I needed a few weeks off. I took those, I'm well rested, and I'm back, and I, I'm so happy to be back. Uh, thank you, Beatrice, and you've seen all of our videos. That is awesome, Mariu. So I'm glad you enjoy them, and I'm glad you're learning English with us. Uh, Shohili, you're very welcome. And hey, Yelda's back. Welcome, Yelda. Yelda has been a student with us for quite a while. So let's get into tonight's lesson. Uh, it's a beautiful day, so I don't want to keep you too, too long, but uh, I'm willing to hang out as long as you guys want to. Alrighty. So like I said, we're going to talk about citizenship. We've got five things to cover tonight. Um, first, we're going to have our discussion, then we're going to do a little true-false, some questions about Canadian citizenship. We'll go through a little checklist, what you need to do to become a citizen. We're going to work a little bit on a practice test, and then we're going to look at some resources that you can use to help you prepare for your citizenship application. Um, before we get into this discussion, I'm just hoping with tonight's lesson, we're going to practice our English, of course, but we're going to get some more information about how to become a citizen, mm -hmm. and we're going to practice a little bit for the citizenship test. So hopefully you guys will know what you need to study and how you can do well on that test. Okay, so I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, you can answer one or all of these questions. Um, so number one, Let's read that. Are you a Canadian citizen or do you plan to become one? So I know a lot of the viewers here maybe don't really plan on becoming a citizen. Maybe you're just coming to Canada to study or to work. 
Uh, maybe you'll get your permanent residency, but maybe you don't want to become a citizen. I just want to know if you are a citizen, if you want to become a citizen, you can let me know. Uh, okay, number two, I think this is an interesting question. What are the benefits? So what do you get with citizenship? What is the reason for becoming a citizen? Um, and also, are there any negatives or any downsides to citizenship? And there could be. You, you have to think through it if you really want to become a Canadian citizen or not. Uh, number three, what do you know about the process of applying for citizenship in Canada? So, Shohili, if you're, you're still here when we cover number three, maybe we can ask you some questions. That would be a good chance to ask Shohili if she can answer, great. If not, then maybe I can try and answer. And then number four, what do you want to learn about this topic? So why are you tuning in tonight? And what are you hoping to learn from tonight's lesson? Okay, so I see a few more people joined us. Uh, Shohili loves our beautiful background. That's great. And Eliana's back. Welcome back, Eliana. So glad to see that you can join us tonight. Uh, all right, so think about these questions, and I'd love to hear at least answer one or two of them, please. No, it cuts off the screen. I guess I'll, I'll start. Um, I am a Canadian citizen, so um, that's the only citizenship that I have. Um, what are the benefits? So I'll, I'll talk about one benefit of citizenship that I know. Uh, one benefit is being able to vote. So without being a Canadian citizen, you cannot vote in a you know, Canadian federal, provincial, or municipal election. So voting, I think, is a really important thing that you can't do unless you're a citizen. So I think that's probably, in my opinion, the most or one of the most important benefits, but I'm sure there are others that we can discuss. Uh, I know quite a bit about the process for applying. So I've helped a few people apply for their citizenship. Uh, I've done the forms with them. I taught a class about preparation for the citizenship test. So we, we did a lot of practice questions and practice tests. So I don't know everything about citizenship. You know, I'm not a lawyer or a citizenship judge, but I know quite a bit about the process. All right, so let's, let's see what Beatrice says because she has some answers for us here. Number one, no, but we plan on becoming citizens someday. Okay, that's great to hear. Um, I don't see many downsides, great. Number three, um, tips and hearing your experiences. Uh, so Shohili, if you're still watching, please share a couple of tips for us, right? Or you can talk about your experience a little bit. Um, I know it probably took a long time. You know, the, the processing times these days are, are really long. So I, I saw online that it's over two years of waiting. So hopefully you didn't wait that long, Shohili but we'd love to hear about your experience. And you wanna learn what you need to do, Beatrice. Okay, that is great. Uh, thank you for answering Beatrice, great English. And Eliana, you want to become one as well. That's great. Okay, um, so please, anybody else wants to answer, that's awesome. Let's talk a little bit more about number two. So benefits are, you know, we talked about voting, um, some jobs you actually do need to be a citizen in Canada. So working in the military, for example, in the Canadian forces, you need to be a citizen for that. Um, RCMP, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, I think you do. Um, also like border security, those types of jobs, I think you need to be a citizen as well as a politician, right? You can't be the prime minister unless you're a citizen of Canada. So those are some benefits. Uh, passport, you need a passport or you might want a Canadian passport because it makes it easy to travel to lots of countries. That's another benefit of citizenship. Um, a downside could be, 
One downside is that some countries don't allow dual citizenship or two citizenships. So if you have Canadian citizenship, you may not be able to have citizenship in, say, China or another country. But that's something you need to look into. If you look into your country, if they allow dual citizenship, then it's no problem to have citizenship of more than one country. Canada allows it, but your home country may not allow it. So that could be a downside, right? If it makes it more difficult to go to your country or access services in your country when you're there, maybe that's something that you want to think about before you apply for Canadian citizenship. Uh, the other one is jury duty. So I don't know if we've talked about jury duty before, but if you're a citizen, you may have to serve on a jury. So you might have to stop work or school or whatever, serve on a jury for a period of time. Um, but don't worry, you don't lose your job or you don't get in trouble at school. But it's, it's one of the requirements of citizenship. Okay, great. Let's hear a couple more ideas from you guys. Uh, I would like to know about the process and how the test is. Okay, great. So we'll talk a little bit about the process mm -hmm. as well as the test. So it's great that you joined in, Eliana. Uh, my plan is to live in Canada. Uh, I want to go through to plan nominal province Atlantic. So I think you're talking about the provincial nominee program. So we call it PNP, Provincial Nominee Program. And that's a provincial thing. Um, so Nova Scotia has one. Uh, other provinces also have their own. Okay, uh, I'm from Venezuela. I don't have benefits in my country. I hope to find better benefits in Canada. So yeah, that's great. Although a lot of the benefits are available to permanent residents, um, people who have permanent residency, right? So things like our pension plan, health plan, all of those things are pretty much the same for citizens and permanent residents. So as long as you come as a permanent resident, you have access to all of those, all of those benefits in Canada. Okay, thank you, Mariu, that's great. Uh, Zinep, so I am a permanent resident and I want to become a Canadian citizen in order to increase my chances of working with the federal government. Okay, great, so like I said, Zineb, you're right. Certain jobs within the federal government may only be for citizens. Things about like um, secret information, military, that type of thing. Although you can work in the federal government, most jobs without being a citizen. Uh, I don't have an idea about the process to become a citizen, just what you taught us in the course in Halifax. So Zineb is talking about a course called Introduction to Nova Scotia that I taught her three years ago, uh, at least three years ago. So that was a long time ago. And of course, you know, maybe some things have changed since then. All right, thank you, Zineb, that's great. And Beatrice, so it's not that different from permanent residency. So it's really not. Uh, mm, there are a few things. When you're a citizen, for example, you don't have to renew your permanent residency card there's no limitations on leaving Canada if you're a citizen. So as a permanent resident, you need to stay in Canada two years out of five years to maintain your residency. So I'll say that again. To maintain your residency in Canada, you have to be physically in mm -hmm. Canada two years out of a five-year period. If you're a citizen, you can leave for longer than that. So for example, I lived in Taiwan four years in a row. I didn't move back to Canada and I, I didn't lose my residency in Canada. So I don't know if that makes sense, but as a citizen, you're free to go away as long as you want and you will always keep that citizenship. Whereas permanent residents have to live in Canada. Um, so there are some, it's a little bit easier to be a citizen in that regard. Okay, so here Shohili is the expert. No need to renew status. So that's sort of what I said. Um, as a permanent resident, you have to renew your permanent residency card, things like that. More job opportunities. So you're right, certain jobs might be available to citizens. 
uh, right to vote, exactly, and Canadian passport. So those are really good reasons. Those are really important reasons. And, you know, most people feel, feel that way as well. Okay, and Beatrice says, got it. So overall, there are some benefits. There's not a lot of drawbacks or downsides to citizenship. Uh, the one I mentioned, dual citizenship, if your country doesn't allow it, that would be a big negative for me. Okay, let's move on. So this is a, a little activity. Let's do a true-false activity. Some of these are true, some of them are false. Okay, so don't just read it and say, this is true. Think about it for a second and then write T, T for true or F. How do you make an F? Does that look like an F? I don't know how to make an F. Uh, so write a T or an F. Is this true or false based on your knowledge of Canadian citizenship? All right, so let's do the first one together. You must be over 18 to become a citizen. Think about that for a sec. Do you need to be 18 to become a citizen? Okay, Beatrice, perfect. You wrote false F. That is definitely false. Right, because children, children can easily become a citizen if their parents apply for them or their guardian applies for them, even if the parents are not citizens, right? So you might have a case where a parent ha hasn't been in Canada long enough, but one parent has and the child has been with the parent who's been there longer. They may apply for citizenship for just the child or one of the parents or, or both parents together, they might want to wait for that. So it's definitely false. Any age doesn't matter, but the age is important for other things. And we'll see that in a few minutes. Okay, great job, Yelda, Mariu. Everybody knows that you don't have to be 18 to become a citizen. How about the second question? Children born in Canada are automatically, or without doing anything, citizens of Canada. Okay, and I think, Zineb, you might have experience with this, right? Because I think maybe one of your children were born in Canada. So... This is true, and Canada, as well as the United States, if you have a child, even if you're, say, just working in Canada or traveling to Canada and your baby is born in Canada, they have citizenship, but maybe you don't, right? So Zineb, maybe in your case, if a child was born in Canada, they're a citizen, but you might not be, right? You haven't been here long enough to to go through the citizenship process. So it's good to know. Don't worry about children born in Canada. They don't need to apply for citizenship and you don't need to, to go through all of that for those children. Okay, Shohili says true as well. Perfect. All right, this is a little bit tricky. Applicants, so the person who applies, must be permanent residents and live in Canada at least two years out of three years. It gets a little confusing. So there are time requirements that you must be in Canada. So is it two years out of three years living in Canada? Uh, Mario says true. Beatrice says true. Okay, great. Zineb says false. Actually, this one is false. So three years. Basically, you need to live in Canada three years or 1,095 days. 
out of a five-year period, right? So during the last five years, you had to live in Canada 1,095 days. It's really important that you guys keep track. So if you're coming to Canada, what day did you arrive in Canada? That would be day one. If you leave Canada on a trip, even if you go out for a week, you have to mark that down on your, your calculator. So there's a page that you have to fill out or you can do it online. Your, uh, what do they call it? The, the residency calculation calculator or something. Anyway, so three years, after three years in Canada, physically living in Canada, then you can apply for your citizenship. Um, that's great. Okay, so you can leave Canada during those five years, but to actually become a citizen, you need 100, well, sorry, 1,095 days living here in Canada. So keep track of all the days you leave. When you come back, all of your flights, you might want to keep a record of your flights, just in case they ask and you need to show somebody that you were actually living in Canada. Okay, so that's a really important one. Number four, you must file your taxes in Canada. So each year you should do an income tax return in order to become a Canadian citizen. Uh, by the way, if you are in Canada, you may have to file your income taxes. I think the deadline is May 2nd. So you have almost two weeks left to file your taxes for 2021. So make sure that you do that. Uh, Shohili says true. Beatrice says true. That is true. So if you are required to do a tax return, so if you owe money to the government, or you're getting government benefits, you must do an income tax return, right? So it's a good idea, do it anyway, but think about that if you're applying for citizenship, you really need to make sure that you do an income tax return. And Mario, you got that one as well. So file your taxes every year, it's a good idea to do it anyway. Okay, number five, everyone must pass a citizenship test. So there is a test that people need to take, testing you about your knowledge of Canada and our culture and our history and all of that stuff. Does everybody need to take it? Uh, Shohili says true. Okay. Everyone, Shohili. Even children. True, Beatrice says true. Okay, this is one where age is important, right? So only people 18, between 18 and 54 need to take this test. Uh, the government decided that children don't need to take it because Maybe it's hard for them to study. People older than 54, they also don't need to take the test. So if you're worried about taking the test, you can wait until you're 54 or 55 and then apply for citizenship. But I think you guys are younger, so you're probably going to have to study and take the citizenship test. Uh, okay, Shohili, so children and older people. Yeah, so 55 don't need to take it. And younger than 18 don't need to take it. But think about that. You know, if you have a child who's 17 years old and they're almost 18, maybe you want to apply for your citizenship and get it before they, they turn 18 years old. Or if you're 54, maybe you want to wait a little while and wait until you're 55. So that's one of the cases where age is important, uh, just for the test. All right, number six, it's free to apply for citizenship. Hmm. That's better. Uh, 
Okay, Zineb says false. False, false. Okay, you guys seem to know. Um, it's not free. Unfortunately, it can be quite expensive. So 630 per adult. So if there's two of you, double it. That would be 1260 minors. So I think under 18 is $100. So that's... That's a lot of money, uh, especially for some people. So think about it, set money aside. If you want to apply for citizenship, it's going to cost, say you're applying for two adults and two children, that's a lot of money. It's almost $1,500. So put that money away, set it aside, and be ready to pay when you send your application in. Uh, very soon it will be free. So. They talk about it, right, Shohili? So there has been a lot of talk in the government and in parliament about making it free. I will believe it when I see it. So they've been talking about that for a while. Um, you know, with, with all the COVID stuff and the, the government benefits, they're probably not going to make it free anytime soon. But anyway, we'll see. Um, pay attention. Make sure you know they've been talking about making it free, but I'm not sure if it will be. Uh, some provinces are removing that payment. Is it true? So that's a good question, Mariu, but it's not up to the provinces. It is up to the federal government. So when you study for the citizenship test, you learn about the levels of government. You have federal, provincial, and municipal. So the federal government is in charge of citizenship. So that's the government of Canada. The provinces don't have the ability to make it free. Maybe for something else, maybe for like the provincial nominee program, that application, maybe that could be free. So they have the right to make that payment free, but not the citizenship payment. Um, so I'm going to say Maybe someday, but probably not anytime soon. Okay, thank you guys. That's great. Uh, let's move on. I think we have, you know, five or six more questions. This is about the English ability or French ability. You must prove your language ability if you are between 18 and 54. Uh, you're welcome, Mario. And we'll we'll talk a little bit about how we can prove your language ability. Uh, Shohili says true. Beatrice says true. And yes, this one is definitely true. They want you to prove that you have high enough English or French ability to live in Canada and participate in Canadian life. Doesn't mean you need to have enough to go to university, just means you have to be pretty good or okay in English. Um, okay, no problem, Shohili. Thank you for coming. Uh, congratulations again on your, on your citizenship. So how do we prove your language ability? You must show them that you have at least CLB or Canadian Language Benchmark 4 in English or French. So doesn't matter English or French. Basically, there's a few ways you can do it. Uh, one, you go to college, university, or high school in an English-speaking country, like someone from America or England or Australia has no problem because they show, you know, I went to university and the language was in English. So that is one form of proof. Another is an IELTS test. So you can show them the IELTS, general or academic. If you have over like a 4.5 in listening and speaking, then that's enough to show them. Um, and then finally, you can also study English in Canada. So if you take English classes in Canada, you can get a certificate from your teacher and show them, and that is a way to prove your, your language ability. 
Uh, there's also another test called the cell pip, which you can take and that can be used as well. So there's a test you can take, a couple tests, study in college or university in English, um, and study in a paid government language class. Okay, so you do need to prove it. Make sure you keep a copy of your, say, IELTS test. So if you take an IELTS test to come to Canada, make sure you hold on to the certificate and keep a copy of that because you can use it when you apply for your citizenship later. And no, the government doesn't keep the copy for you. So you will have to submit it again when you apply for citizenship. Okay, is that clear? Do you have any questions? Uh, please ask questions as we go through the materials. Maybe you, you have a specific question about one of these things. Okay, great. Number eight, people who have committed a crime may not be eligible for citizenship or allowed to be a citizen. Okay, Beatrice says true. This is true. So you have to be careful not to break any laws when you're living in Canada. So even if, you know, you broke the law in another country and the Canadian government found out about it, you may not be allowed to become a Canadian citizen. So certain laws like speeding, no problem, that doesn't give you a criminal record but any law that gives you a criminal record in Canada and you break it, then you're going to have some problems when you apply for citizenship. Okay, so please don't kidnap anybody. Don't, just be careful, right? Uh, don't sell drugs or anything like that. Uh, so Mario says false, not eligible. Okay, yeah, I know what you mean. True and Osman, hey Osman, how are you today? Uh, he says, yes, it's true. So be careful, don't break the law. I know you wouldn't do it on purpose, but some people are, are not allowed to get their citizenship because of it. All right, think about this. If you marry a Canadian or a Canadian citizen, do you automatically get your citizenship? So yeah, you marry Bob the Canadian, you're from another country, does that make you a citizen just because you get married to a Canadian person? Uh, Beatrice says true. I think it's true. Good guess, but it's false. Um, they still need to apply for citizenship. So just because you marry a Canadian person doesn't give you the right to be citizens. Uh, so don't get married to a Canadian just because you think it will give you citizenship. Uh, it might help to, to get permanent residency, right? They might speed up your application for permanent residency, but it doesn't automatically make you a citizen. Uh, great, my friend, thank you for teaching. Yeah, it's, it's what I like to do. So you're very welcome, Osman. Uh, I love teaching, so. And I'm, I'm glad to be back. This is nice. Uh, okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the test. If you don't pass the citizenship test the first time, you can take it again. So you get two or three or four or five or six tries on the citizenship test. Is that true? Um, Okay, Abdullah's back. Hey, Abdullah, my, my longtime friend and student. At least you need to apply. Yeah, so if you marry a Canadian, you still have to apply for your citizenship. What about number 10? Yeah, I think there are 12 altogether, so we've got a couple more to go through. Uh, Mariu says true. 
You are right. Mariu, you got this one right. Osman, you got it as well. So this one is true. Actually, you get two, two attempts. Say you didn't study, you don't do very well on your citizenship test. Um, the test itself is 20 questions. So 20 questions about Canada, also about your province. So you need to know some about your province and some about Canada. You need at least, I think, 80%. So 16, shoot, I forget. Um, anyway, we'll talk about that in a bit. I think you need 16, 15 or 16 correct. If you don't get those correct, you can take it again. So same thing, you, you take your test. If you don't pass the second time, then you have an interview. You have to have an interview with a citizenship judge. They ask you questions about Canada. They try to find out if you really tried to learn stuff about Canada or not. And then they make a decision about whether you should be allowed to continue your application. So you can take it twice and then you have an interview. Uh, okay, uh, Abdullah says yes. And Eliana says she doesn't know but now she knows. So yes, you can take it twice. Uh, citizenship test is presential or online. So it's usually in person. So we do it in person. You go to a place. Uh, I don't, I think during COVID they had it online. Um, Shohili left. Shohili would know. Abdullah, did you get your citizenship recently? Um, I can't remember if you got yours. So Abdullah, you might be able to answer this question. Did they do it online during COVID? I think maybe they did because they couldn't have people in person, but usually it would be in person because they don't want people to cheat and to get answers from their family members. So it's a lot easier to do that in person. Okay, Abdullah says yes online. We'll see what happens. I think now it's probably in person, but they're still doing the ceremonies online. So maybe you can still do your citizenship test online. So great question, Mariu. By the time you get here and do your citizenship test, who knows what it'll be? Like maybe virtual reality or something. Uh, okay, so number 11, you must attend a citizenship ceremony to become a citizen. Okay, I, true. So uh, Beatrice says true. Yes, this one is true. You don't become a citizen officially. So you paid your money, you sent in your application, you've done your citizenship test and you've passed the test. And then you need to wait for this very special ceremony. Uh, this ceremony includes a judge. So it has a citizenship judge. Your family and friends can go. Uh, you can dress up. It's very nice. But you have to do something during this ceremony. It's called the oath of citizenship. So you have to repeat after the judge saying that you will do these things as a citizen and you will respect the queen. Um, but you don't actually become a citizen until after you do that. And they only do that during the ceremony. So yes, you need to wait and then do this ceremony. It's online now, but maybe it's in person again in the future. And Osman got that one too. Last one, and then we'll move on. Uh, it takes about one year to process an application. So you apply, wait a year, take your citizenship test, pass that, have your citizenship ceremony. How long is the wait time? Uh, Mary says it's beautiful. Great, have you been to one, Mary? Um, I've been to one and it was really neat. Uh, people were so happy to have their family there and watch them become Canadian citizens. Um, so Beatrice says false. 
maybe, but true. Okay. Um, like I said earlier, I sort of gave away this answer. The current wait time is really long. It's 27 months. Um, a lot of things are slower. So uh, residency applications, passport renewals, citizenship applications, everything is slowed down these days. So think about that when you're applying. So you need three years in Canada. Then you can apply. Then it's at least another two years on top of that. So altogether, you're looking at minimum five years from when you arrive to Canada until you become a citizen. So that's a long time, five years. But you can start planning as soon as you arrive. You can start learning the information. You can work on your language. You can take some practice tests. And then once that three-year mark hits, you can apply. And then you might have to wait a while to take your citizenship test. So yeah, it's it's really a long time. It's like being born again. Yeah, it's like double your life, right? Waiting for this. Uh, or maybe you mean like becoming Canadian is like being born again. That's a good way to look at it. Um, so anyway, it takes a long time. Let's review a little bit some of the stuff we talked about. So any age can become citizens. You need to live in Canada at least three years out of the last five years. There is a cost. You do have to pay quite a bit of money. Uh, you do have to take a citizenship test. It is uh, 20 questions. So it's all multiple choice. And we'll look at an example later. Multiple choice questions, 30 minutes to answer those questions. And the topics are about Canada. So Canadian history, geography, uh, politics, all of those things. You need to have a certain level of language ability in English or French. And we talked about the ways that you can show them that you have that ability. Taxes, you have to pay taxes and submit a tax return for at least three of the last five years. And if you commit certain crimes, you may not be eligible for citizenship. Okay, um, Beatrice has a comment here. Countdown will start on the 28th, yeah. So the first day you arrive, I think that counts as day one, and then you, you start counting from then on. All right, thank you, Beatrice. Here's the process. Uh, so let's talk about the application. So once you reach those three years in Canada, you get an application package. Um, let's see if I can bring that up here. Here, I'm just going to show you the website. Um, whoops. Give me one sec. And I'm going to share my screen. Here, I'm going to remove this for now. Hmm. Weird, it's not working. Sorry, I'm just having a little technical difficulty. Chrome has lost permission to capture your screen. Go to system preferences. I don't want to do that. Mm. Hmm. 
Okay. Never mind. Uh, it's not worth it right now. Uh, anyway, sorry about that. I was trying to share my screen. It wouldn't let me do it. Let's go through the, the things that you need. Um, so you need to have your application package, which you can download from the Government of Canada website, or sometimes you can apply online. Um, so depending on your situation, you can get one for family, one for an individual, one for an adult, one for a child without their adults. So make sure you choose the correct package when you're applying for citizenship. You also, number two, you need to have a physical presence calculator. So you need to show the dates that you were in Canada and then take away any dates you were outside of Canada. So you have to fill that out, showing them exactly when you entered or left Canada. And they may ask for proof, right? They may ask you to show them that you were in Canada during a certain date um, if they don't believe that you were actually here. Third thing is your passport. You have to have a color copy of your passport. Fourth thing is you have your language ability, proof of language ability. So that could be an IELTS test uh, results that you copy and send to them or the actual test result that you send to them, a certificate from a, a language class, etc. Next one, you need two a photocopy of two personal identification documents. So things like driver's license, um, health card, that type of thing to prove that you are actually who you say you are. You need two photos, two citizenship photos that you can go to Walmart or some other place and they take those pictures for you. Uh, not just a, a phone picture, you need to have official citizenship photos done for you and signed on the back. Um, a fee receipt showing that you paid your, your fee for citizenship. You have a checklist that you need to fill out and they might require some other documents. If, if you have a special case, then you may have to prove these other documents like something from a judge if you committed a crime or something like that, but most people don't need to submit those. Um, okay. So it's my dream to have Canadian citizenship, good vibes. I want to live in Halifax. Yeah, that's a good dream. Uh, we will be able to approach CLB4 with your English teaching. I hope so. But you can't use my classes as proof of your English ability. But I think you probably will have it for sure, Osman. Uh, I would like to travel all over Canada. Yeah, so definitely me too. So those are the things you need when you're applying for citizenship. After all of this, you submit all of these documents, they will contact you um, and tell you, yes, you have everything you need, or no, you're missing something or you made a mistake. Then they send it all back to you. Then you have to fix it and send it back to them. So you will be notified when you are in line to have your application processed. So once you get the approval, you wait, like we said, two years, and then you'll be invited to take your test. After you take your test, you get the result right away, and then you have to wait for your ceremony. Okay, great. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about the test. The test itself is based off of a guide called the Discover Canada Guide. Um, let me just see if we can open that here. Since it, it won't let me share, we might have a little difficulty with this. But we are going to try our best. All righty, let me see. Please let me share my screen. Uh, oh, can I do it? I think I'm getting it. 
Yes. Uh, will not be able to record the content in your channel. I don't know if I can do it. I better not, because it's going to close me out of this if I allow it to share my screen. So that's OK. We can, we can have our test in a different way. Um, so these are the topics of the citizenship test. You have to learn about history, uh, the people of Canada, government of Canada, geography, rights and responsibilities, economy, symbols, holidays, sports, elections, etc. All of this stuff, I have some links coming up. Um, and you guys can download these slides from my website. I'll put them up on the website in a day or two. Um, or you can just search. Go to Google and search for Discover Canada Guide. So this guide is basically, it's about 20, 30 pages or so. Uh, and it's got all the information you need for the test. So you can listen to it. Um, you can read it. You can... They have a few videos and stuff like that. Basically, you study the guide and then you'll be prepared for the citizenship test. Uh, the link is here, the second one there. So www.canada.ca. It's on the Immigration and Refugees website. And then it's the Discover Canada guide. Um, there is also another website that's really good. The bottom one there is called citizenshipcounts.ca. This has a lot of practice activities and things that you can do to prepare for the test. Um, so I really recommend you, maybe you can take a picture on your phone and then visit these websites after today's class. But the first one is the Government of Canada website where you get all the information about citizenship, the second one is the Discover Canada Guide. And the third one is a practice website where you can learn about citizenship, but also prepare for the test. So take a screenshot, visit these websites after class. That would be great. Um, Osman says he wants to travel all over Canada. Uh, me too, I'd love to travel all over Canada. I have been to most places, but I missed a few places along the way. All right, we've got just a few minutes. So let's do a few practice questions for our citizenship test practice. Um, okay, so I'm not gonna be able to share my screen like I wanted, but that's okay. Let's do a listening test. Um, give me one moment, there it is. All right, so we don't have time for a full citizenship test. So let's just do five questions. Uh, five questions about the citizenship quiz. Let's choose a province, Nova Scotia, and we'll start our quiz. Um, let's skip that question. All right. Number one, question one. What is the name of Canada's national anthem. So what is the name of Canada's national anthem or song? Citizenship question one, what is the name of Canada's national anthem or song? It's a little bit easier. On the real test, you have choices, right? It'll say, a is this, B, C, D, and you choose the right one. But for us, uh, I'm not going to give you that chance. Beatrice got it. So Beatrice is correct, uh, except it's just O. So just the letter O. Let me see here. Uh, o Canada. And actually on one of the questions, uh, it asks you the, the words of the song. So it asks you, what is the first line of this song? Does anybody know how it goes? What's the first sentence or first line in O Canada? 
Uh, Zineb got it to O Canada. That's great. Uh, it's just separated two words. How does it go? What is the first line of O Canada? What are the words? Okay, I'll write them here. If you know, you can write them. Maybe Zineb, you can go back to the, the books that I gave you during our class. Jalile is here. Jalile is here to save the day. It goes, oh, Canada, our home and native land. Right, so you might be asked the name of the song, or you may be asked what are the words, especially the first line or two. So don't just know the name, you should know the words to the song. Uh, Julile, awesome job. You got, your, I helped you get your citizenship, didn't you? Like uh, a few years ago, we were working on your application together. Uh, I remember that, Julile. Okay, great. Uh, so song any symbols about canada uh canadian flag like one of the questions what does the canadian flag look like right you have to know the colors you have to know that there's a a maple leaf symbol but that could be easily another question uh so exactly mario you got it our home and native land you got it in 2018. Okay, so you've been a citizen for over four years. So that's great. All right, second question. Let's do three more and then we're done for tonight. Uh, second question is, who was the first prime minister of Canada? Who was the first prime minister of Canada? It's okay if you only know it's a he, his last name, or of his first name, first and last, if you know it. So second question, who was the first prime minister of Canada? Uh, I should revise. Yeah, you should review, review the lyrics. I think you, uh, John McDonald's, close, the, just the spelling, Julie it's not spelled like the restaurant. It's spelled like the bridge. Uh, Justin Trudeau. No, he was not the first. He's the current one. Uh, but before him, we had lots, right? There were, how old is Canada? 1867 until now. Usually they serve one or two terms. So we've had probably... 150, I don't know, probably 60 or more prime ministers. Uh, Justin Trudeau is the current prime minister, but the first prime minister was Sir John A. MacDonald. Oh, it's MacDonald, M-A-C Donald. Um, Kind of like the restaurant, but it's spelled differently. So Sir John A. Macdonald was the first prime minister of Canada. So you should know that, right? You should know the year Canada became a country, who was the first prime minister, and you need to go even further back, right? So maybe the next question. So question number three, who are the founding peoples of Canada? So what are the three important groups of people in Canada's history? So I'll give you a clue. One group is the British. So the British or the English is one group. What are the two other important groups of people who, who created Canada, who founded Canada, or I don't know. I don't like to say it like that. Um, who was here first? 
So that's one group, the people who lived in Canada before European people came, the British people who came a few hundred years ago, and there was another group as well. Okay, Julie Lay got it. So Aboriginal, you know, we in the book, in the Discover Canada book, they use Aboriginal. But most people now say Indigenous, um, but in the book they do say Aboriginal. So Aboriginal or Indigenous, the British and the French. So you have to go back to long before Canada became a country, right? You have to know about the Indigenous people of Canada. And there are three main groups you should know about. The, um, the First Nations, the Inuit, and the Métis. So you have to know there were three important groups. Where did they live? How did they live before European people came? And then once the British and French came, they had a lot of wars. They, you know, they used the resources of Canada. Uh, and then you have to learn about the formation of Canada. Okay, great. So French, British, Natives. Yeah, Aboriginal or Indigenous is great. French with a C, Zineb, great. Uh, Africans, you know, there are, and you know, African people have played a big role in Canada's history, but they're not really considered one of the founding groups of Canada, right? But you do have to learn about African Canadians. And um, an important part of the book talks about slaves, right? Slaves who escaped from America to come to Canada. And, and that's an important part of our history for sure. All right, let's do one more question and then I think we're done. Uh, I don't wanna keep you all night. All right. I don't like that question. I already talked about that. That's uh, not a good question. Okay, last question. Who is the queen's representative in Canada? So on the test, you have to learn about the connection between the, the queen, the queen of England, what is her relationship to Canada and who represents the queen in Canada? So last question, who is the queen's representative in Canada? Because the queen is busy, right? She has to drink her tea. Uh, she has to play with her dogs. She can't come to Canada and sign all of the laws and things like that. So she has a person living in Canada who takes care of those, those duties for her. Uh, good guess. So Prime Minister, that's a good guess, Yelda. Good guess, Beatrice. Uh, but no, there's another person and another job who takes care of that. Uh, indigenous, yeah. So Beatrice, Indigenous is one of the founding groups the most important, in my opinion, group. And then you have the British and the French. So one person, you can Google it. If you need to Google it, it's okay. Who is the Queen's representative in Canada? Uh, not the Prime Minister. Queen, the Queen is the Queen, right? Queen Elizabeth II. Um, she has a person to take care of business in Canada, and Julie Lai got it. So the governor general is a Canadian who basically they're chosen, right? They're chosen by the prime minister to take care of the queen's affairs in Canada and attend events and sign things that need to be signed to take care of business. Because like I said, the queen is very busy with her tea and scones and whatever else the queen does, right? So you should know how the government works, right? Who is the prime minister? Who is the governor general? Who is the queen? What's she important for? Um, so yeah, you need to know all that stuff. You need to know geography. You need to know symbols. You need to know things about sports, like what are, Can uh, what are Canada's summer and winter sports? all of that stuff. So your homework, if you choose to accept it, is to visit these links 
especially the second one. So the Discover Canada Guide. I want you guys to check it out. Start learning a little bit. So this is great reading practice or listening practice if you want to listen to it. Start learning about Canada, right? So you don't have to study right before the exam. You're learning as you go. And this will also help you as you, you know, you get used to life in Canada and you know more about the history and culture. So your homework is to go to the Discover Canada guide, start reading it, start listening to it. And then if you have any questions, you can let me know. Uh, indigenous. Yeah, so the spelling is that way, indigenous, the way you spelled it in that sentence, Beatrice. Uh, tell us about the Hispanic population of Canada. That is a great question. And it's, it's pretty small, right? It's still a, a smaller group compared to you know, some other groups within Canada, but it's definitely growing very quickly, Osman. So immigration, especially from the, the Latin American countries, is growing pretty much as quickly as, as other populations. So it's still quite small compared to, say, America or uh, other countries, but it's getting larger. And I don't have any information exactly uh but i have lots of friends who who are hispanic and i'm sure once you come here osman i'll introduce you and they can tell you all about it okay thank you for that i have a question before leaving the session is it possible that we can apply for citizenship for uh only our children under 18 not for us so yes it is possible yelda but they still have to meet those requirements, right? So they still need to live in Canada three years. Once they live in Canada three years, you can apply for your children, even though you may not want to be a citizen uh, or you're not eligible at that time. So answer is yes, there's a special application form that you choose just for a child. Okay, uh, great question, but the answer is definitely yes. Uh, Hispanic population is growing rapidly. Yes. So, you know, it changes a lot. And early in Canada's history, it was mainly European people coming. And then it changed to a lot of Asian people coming. Um, and now, you know, it's definitely Asian, African, and uh, Hispanic. So it's growing very quickly. And of course, they, they make a huge contribution to Canada. I just can't think of exactly the number of Hispanic people in Canada. Okay, so I don't want to keep you any longer. I'm, I'm so happy to be back and I'm so happy that you guys joined us. Um, so if you want to go download these slides from today's lesson, you can visit the website. Should be up tomorrow or the day after. Email me, info at rightstartcanada.ca. And if you really like the lessons, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash rightstartns. And it's only $4 and I would really, really appreciate it. So thank you so much for coming. Have a great night and we will be back on Monday. Okay, bye everybody. Take care.